We're going to pause just for a moment to have a word from our sponsor. I'm Rusty Keeley. I'm the CEO of the Keeley Companies. My dad, Larry Keeley, started the business, and we're really able to take his entrepreneurial spirit, his commitment to family, and we're able to take that platform and grow it. We didn't lose customers. We just kept adding to customers because we did quality work, and we took care of our people. When somebody takes something and makes a success, oh, it's something you started. It's uh, very special. Our people are special because of, of how much they care about what it is that they do. I've been here for 23 years, uh, started in 96 with a shovel in my hand. We have some of the most incredible people around. Innovators, we have thinkers. You know, we just have people that are passionate about life. The people that make up Keeley are everything good. The people first culture that has led to their amazing success and growth is exactly why we are honored to have them as our partners. Learn more about our partners and friends at their website. It is at KeeleyCompanies.com. One more time, KeeleyCompanies.com. Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to the Live Inspired Podcast with John O'Leary. Before Joe Buck begins the typical introduction that you, by this point, are super familiar with, and the music is playing below those comments, I wanted to let you know that today you're in for a treat. This is going to be a very special, very unusual podcast because we recorded it live this morning, streaming across all of our platforms, across Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. And who was our guest? Why did we do this? Well, our guest was Susan Chapchak. The name's maybe not familiar to you yet, but it ought to be, and it will be in a minute. Her maiden name is O'Leary. Susan O'Leary Chapchak is my sister. She is a remarkable human being. She's got a full plate and she always has a massive, large, sincere smile on her face. April is National Siblings Month. I have five siblings that I'd love to celebrate, but today I'm going to celebrate National Sibling Month with just one of them. So you're going to meet Susan O'Leary Chapchak here in a moment. In addition to that, we're celebrating the first birthday party of our, no, not child. They're older than that by now. My followers and listeners and friends, the first birthday party for the book In Awe. In Awe turns one later on next week. Happy birthday, In Awe. In Awe is a national number one bestseller. It's been translated into almost a dozen languages. So be on the lookout for that. If you've not yet checked out In Awe, check it out. You're going to love it. You can learn more about that at Read In Awe. Dot com, And I look forward to bringing you more Live Inspired podcast guests live to you in the future. Uh, where is this going to take place? Well, it's going to take place on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and YouTube. So do not miss out. My favorite thing about going live is how you, and that's you, the Live Inspired community, you can be a true part of the show in real time. You can hear the unedited comments that are going on between the guest and me. You can raise your hand. You can ask questions. You can state what you're feeling, what you're thinking. You can be part of the program. So I invite you to join us live for these conversations. We're not going to do it constantly, but we're going to do it from time to time. And I want to encourage you today to mark your calendar on when we do this next. So when will that be? Well, it's right around the corner. Tuesday, May 4th at 10 a.m. Central, I'm going live with a friend, a renowned author, an incredible business leader, an incredible man. His name is Seth Godin. If you have not yet read Seth, heard his story, or been enlightened by some of his wisdom, join us Tuesday, May 4th at 10 a.m. You're going to love it. You can learn more anywhere that you follow the Live Inspired podcast or the John O'Leary work. So check it out online. And if you have questions regarding how do I follow this, how do I stream this, or if you want to watch the video stream of John O'Leary and Susan O'Leary Chapchak, I can send you that. Just do me a favor. Text us at 314-207-5010. The word video. And we will send you today's conversation video version that I recorded with my sister, an amazing human being. You're going to love her. Text me 314-207-5010 and we will make sure that we send you that video today. My friends, I want to thank you for being part of our community. You're going to love this episode. You're going to love the passion and the heart that this woman shares, not only for her brother and her family, 
but for life. So buckle up, get your notepads out, open up your pens, and get ready to be inspired by the one and only Susan O'Leary Chapchak. Welcome to the Live Inspired Podcast with John O'Leary. John is the number one national best-selling author of the book On Fire. He's a world-class inspirational speaker, and he's the host of the Live Inspired Podcast. John interviews extraordinary individuals on their life story so that you can wake up from accidental living and more fully live your life story. Here's your host, John O'Leary. Well, hello, my friends. I'm, I'm going to take off the screen so I can see your face and you can see mine. My name, as Joe Buck just said, is John O'Leary. It is 8.01 in the Midwest. It's 9.01 out east in the, the eastern seaboard, a little bit earlier out west. And if you are tuning in from one of the 75 countries that follow the Live Inspired podcast, we welcome you home on this morning. Many of you know this, but this is the week that we celebrate the first anniversary of the launch of our second national best-selling book. It's called In Awe, and we've been thinking organizationally of some cool ways to celebrate this. Then you mix in the fact that April is National Siblings Month. Hmm. How could we possibly merge both of these things as part of the Live Inspired channel and the Live Inspired podcast. This was something we were racking our minds on recently. And as I looked up at the wall right behind the camera today, I see people like uh, professional athletes, gold medalists, phenomenal artists, business owners, overcomers, mountain climbers, Brene Brown, Mel Robbins, Dave Ramsey, and 350 other amazing leaders. But did you know, did you know that the first ever Live Inspired podcast was with, no, not some artist, not some president, someone far more important, my mother. My mother, her name is Susan O'Leary. Not only is she the first podcast we ever recorded, she's also one of our favorite podcasts that we've ever recorded. So to share not only birthday celebrations for In Awe, not only celebrating my wonderful mother, and not only celebrating National Siblings Month, but celebrating the truth that these are difficult days, but the foundation is firm. And the best of our days are in front of us. I wanted to bring on a special guest today. Before I do so, a quote, a quote for all of you who have siblings out there in the world right now. And for those of you who love someone like a brother or a sister, to the outside world, we all grow old, but not to brothers and sisters. We know each other as we always were. We know each other's hearts. We share private family jokes. We remember family feuds. And we remember family secrets, family griefs, and family joys. We live outside the touch of time as siblings. So today, my brothers and sisters tuning in right now, very first thing I'm going to encourage you to do is to share this broadcast if you are tuning in live on one of our social streams because your followers, your friends, your family will want to hear it because I get to introduce you to someone that I have looked up to and loved for as long as I have been around her name is Susan O'Leary Chapchak. We're going to bring her into the stream right now. Susan O'Leary Chapchak, my sister. Welcome to Live Inspired with John O'Leary. Good morning, John. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here with you this morning. It's good to see you too. Susan, it's awesome to have you around. And uh, this broadcast is live right now to all of your friends, all of your family members, even our own mother, I'm sure, is wiping her eyes right now trying to trying to fully wake up. For those who do not yet know about Susan O'Leary Chapchak, if we randomly met you somewhere, bumped into you, you in the grocery store and said, hey, uh, uh, what, Susan, what do, what do you do for a living? How would you respond to that? Um, John, I, I would uh, let them know that I have a couple of different um, jobs. Um, from a career perspective, I work in marketing, advertising at an agency I've been with and I love for the past um, almost 14 years now. And that is what I do during the days. Um, I do have five children as well. So uh, they are critical to, to our family life and uh, things get a little bit crazy. And then my husband and I also own um, a cafe bakery that he is completely behind and is the mastermind, but I am in the shadows and so proud of what we've built. 
So for those of us who uh, are ever in the mood for a delicious biscuit, savory goodie, or a delicious pie, the, the place is called Bang Bang Pie Shop. It's in Chicago, and it's worth hopping on a flight and going to because not only is Susan and Michael run it, but the pie, the biscuits, the food is that good. So is the coffee. Susan, we'll, we'll end up at Bang Bang Pie Shop here in a minute. But before we do, why don't we go all the way back? Many of the guests that I interview, I have to read their book. And then I have to listen to a bunch of the shows they've been on. And I've got to watch their TED Talks. I didn't have to do quite as much research to know what I wanted to talk about with you because I've known you, respected you, and loved you for our entire lives. But I did have to find some old pictures of you. And so one of the gifts this week was tracking down old pictures. I'm going to put them on the screen as we progress through the conversation so that our friends who are watching right, right now can uh, maybe identify with us our childhood. But first picture, it's going to go up. It's going to show a picture of you and me, your four siblings, and our parents on a road trip. No, not not that one. Yeah. Not that one either. Go up a little bit higher. We're going to go to the road trip where we are in front of a station wagon. There yep. it is. There's, I remember that. For the followers right now, first of all, explain to them what they're looking at for those able to see this picture. Uh, looking at a broken down station wagon, maybe 100 miles or so outside of Atlanta, Georgia, um, because uh, it overheated on our way down to Florida. They also can probably get a glimpse of our older brother Jim's electric guitar in the corner, <laughs> which he had to bring with him and some very despondent, sad faces because we truly were in the middle of nowhere and um, the car was broken, uh, waiting for my dad's older sister to come back and drive and, and, and get us. So was, you know, ignoring that picture and, and instead thinking about the family that was pictured there. When, when you think about your childhood, what are some, some memories that you have or what are some ways that you might use today to describe your childhood? I, I would say easy fun, carefree, safe, um, typical or normal, but not in a bad way. Just, um, just really a well-rounded, um, and, and just easy existence. It was right. very smooth. It was very smooth. It was very easy. It was very blessed. And then our lives, not only mine, but our collective lives changed profoundly when you were just eight years old. There's a story that I very seldom share with live audiences. And yet when I do, people come up to me and they share with me how permanently and radically they are changed and moved because of the generosity, the courage, and the love modeled by a little character within the story. And the story goes like this, John O'Leary at age nine. I'm gonna show our listeners and our viewers a picture right now from January 17th, 1987. But he was involved in a mighty explosion that changed my life. It split a can of gasoline into and launched me 20 feet against the far side of the garage. Eventually, our brother Jim, who may be tuning in right now, was able to save my life. But I found myself that day outside the house. The smoke is billowing through the windows and the doors. The heat has chased your sister, Amy, your brother, Jim, John, and you out of that house. It's a scary situation, so scary that even our golden retriever, Taffy, is now outside. And yet little Susan, eight years old, it's a Saturday morning, your mom and dad are gone, the house is on fire, and you go back into a burning house. Why did you go back into a burning house? Um, well, because kids, I guess, do dumb things, right? <laughs> and um, because you so desperately needed to get cooled down. I remember seeing you and you looked good because the flames were off you, so I felt so good about that. Um, but you were in so much pain and you wanted to be cooled down. You're being generous. I, I did not want to be cooled down. I wanted to be taken out. I was in so much pain and so despondent and so sad, not only about what happened to me, but um, but what I did. And so at age nine, cool down, Susan's being sweet. I, I, I wasn't sure I wanted to live. And this little girl hearing me in the front yard with tears coming over my my cheeks and now tears coming over her cheeks goes into a burning house for the kids paying attention at 809 on a Thursday morning siblings month. It's the last thing in the world you should do. She goes back into the kitchen, fills up a cup of water, comes back outside, throws it right into my face. And as if that is not enough, this brave little adorable, dark haired, big cheat little girl goes back into the house a second time. 
and then a third time, each time throwing cups of water into my face. I think it's one of the greatest examples of the great, one of the commandments, which is to be prepared to lay down your life for someone else. Like that, that, that's one of the goals of our life, to love people to that degree that we are willing daily to lay down our lives for someone else. Susan, you did that on January 17th, and I knew that. What I did not really know until mom and dad and I started talking about our experience of the fire and of the burns and of the five and a half months of recovery is how hard this was for you kids when I was in hospital. I had always assumed that I was the one that got burned. Poor me. I'm the victim. And then mom and dad and I started unpacking this in the years that followed the explosion. And we realized, wow, there were five other little ones affected by that explosion. Five other little siblings who grew up without their parents around every day. Would you just talk about what it was like for you? Why don't we start with the day of the explosion, but then talk about some of the days that followed the explosion? Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know what the experts say that um, very special, amazing days and very dark, hard days are imprinted on your mind. So January 17th is definitely on my mind. I actually remember the day perfectly from the minute I woke up. So probably an hour and a half before all of that went went down till when I went to bed at grandma and grandpa's that night. So it is probably a 10 hour day that I, I can remember most of what happened, which is kind of crazy because it was, um, you know, over 30 years ago. Um, but Certainly, um, the, the fire itself and that experience um, was shocking. It was very hard. Yet when you left, I, I, as a child, I was optimistic. I saw you get into the ambulance. I just kind of assumed, okay, this was a crazy accident. The house is in shambles, but John's going to be just fine. So the, the days and weeks to follow um, were always um, were, were stressful. You could sense that on mom and dad. I was much younger. So as far as those specific conversations, um, I just remembered being so worried about you and just so excited to get to see you in the hospital. But, um, you know, it, as tough as it was, and it, it was so hard, the, the, com the our community, our parish, our love um, around us is probably outweighs some of those darker days. I remember loving being at grandma and grandpa's and then uh, the generous Donovans who opened up their home. I enjoyed being so close to school playing in a creek with all the kids that lived in that neighborhood. So there were very many bright moments that I do remember during all that, that hardness um, and challenge that, you know, as a family we experienced, um, you know, it's certainly my highlight was getting to go see you. I think it was typically Sundays, just once a week, once you were even allowed visitors, which I looked forward to. So as I mentioned the name that I haven't heard in years, but it, it bears repeating the Donovan's. So frequently in life, we hear about these stories in our communities or beyond our communities of, of trial and challenge and tragedy. And we think to ourselves like, well, geez, that, that's horrible, but what can we do? What can we even do for them? Susan, tell our listeners and our viewers today who the Donovans were and how they answered that question. What can we even do for the O'Learys? Yeah, um, a lovely couple that lived in our parish, St. Clement. And um, if I remember correctly, they, they often spent their winters out um, of the St. Louis area, uh, down in Florida, perhaps. So they had a nice, uh, large home that was vacant, completely unused. And so they opened up their home to, to have our whole clan move in for several months, which is <laughs> unbelievable. So we, we moved right into the Donovans as our home was being um, rebuilt. Um, and that, right, that generosity won't, won't ever be forgotten, certainly. So it's just one small but mighty example of the generosity you received, my four other siblings received during that time, and that mom and dad were, were blessed with. Five and a half months in hospital, eventually this little boy and his family come home to a rebuilt house. We return to life as normal. And yet through the ebbs and flows of life, we, you and I, have had our own little challenges going forward, including the fact that our father, one of our heroes of life. His name is Jay Dennis O'Leary. We love him and we look up to him as had his own challenges. I'm going to put a picture up of dad right now. And uh, he's holding a special little boy in the picture. You can tell our viewers uh, who he's holding. But I want you to tell everybody, when you think of dad, first, what is he dealing with today? And what does he instill in you in the manner in which he moves forward through that uh, through that adversity? So uh, dad is holding my fourth child, Charlie, who is 
as much of a stinker as his face looks to be right there. Um, uh, so cute. I love that picture. And dad is absolutely um, one of my heroes. Uh, he's been battling Parkinson's disease for well over 30 years um, and has done it graciously and with so much humility and um, faith. Uh, he remains an example of my life. I tell my kids all the time how blessed I was to have a dad like that, to have a dad like that now in my life. But uh, his humor and uh, energy, love love of basketball, love of so many things that he's instilled certainly in me and my sisters and you guys, John and, and Jim. But, um, you know, so blessed to have that man lead our family, certainly. Indeed. And I'm seeing these comments stream in from Amy O'Leary Geraci. Yeah, she's also one of the siblings. There's six of us. So, uh, be careful what you say about the O'Leary's because one of us might be in the room near you. So Amy is tuning in. Sister Kathy, who I love from SSM, is tuning in among among many, many, many other friends. So very cool to see the engagement in the community. So that's our dad. And he he is a phenomenal example to us, phenomenal father. He's also got a pretty remarkable person in his life who is with him every step and now today, every role along the way. So I'd like to put a picture up of our mother. Her name is Susan O'Leary. When you think of your mom, what do you think of first? Strength, uh, for sure. I think she is the strongest person I know. Her faith, um, her ability to, to move in tough situations. I tell this to, to many of my friends that are struggling. And if they, you know, they, they're just looking for additional advice, it's like, gosh, I got to plug you in with my mom. My mom can, can handle anything. She is the person you'd want by your side. Um, she She is just a... Um, a rock and, and has been for our family and certainly is uh, at this hour in her life right now and, and supporting dad as he, he goes through this journey. Right. It's really well said. And, and, you know, most of the time people say, how's your dad? And right on. My dad deserves to be asked that question and we deserve to uh, be focused on him and loving him and supporting and praying for dad. The reality that we are finally aware of is the caregiver deals with as much or possibly yeah. more than the one they are caring for. And mom has done a phenomenal job loving six kids through the ups and downs of their life. Plenty of ups and plenty of downs for all of us. And now she's doing her finest work as my dad journeys forward three decades and now into Parkinson's disease. We learn a lot about how to show up and engage in life from those who raised us. So you and I have learned a lot from our mother and our father. She learned a lot from her father and her mother. So there's a beautiful picture I bumped into of you wearing a white dress and you are confronted with, I think, <laughs> life giving a person as I've ever met. And I've traveled 50 states and two dozen countries. I've never met anybody like this woman up there. Susan, tell us her name, how you know her and what she means to you. Yeah. Um, how fabulous does she look? That is Caddy <laughs> Kilker. Um, and, and Caddy is our grandma. That is, um, mom's mother and uh the most kind generous faith-filled woman uh probably the best grandma a, a child could ever even dream up she's it's it's what you would you know literally write write a show about i mean she just um was loving and kind and um wanted to always make you feel special and and make you feel as if there was no place she'd rather be in the world than with you at that at that moment and i think that's a gift to make right. people feel that way and that accepted and uh, special so i uh, i know you do john i miss her so much she's been gone exactly a year but in a certainly much better place and she uh, she made it almost 99 years which is incredible so um love her i do too and Susan, i gotta let you know for, for those who are tuning in it is national sibling month so if you, if you have any questions for one of my siblings, I have five that I adore. This one pictured in front of you and you're listening to her voice right now is Susan O'Leary Chapchak. Please feel free to ask the questions of her or me. I want to pivot now from our grandmother who we lost just about exactly a year ago to someone who uh, you have not lost because you are waking up next to him every day. <laughs> His name is Michael Chapchak. He was one of my best friends in college. And subsequently, he's also the owner of Bang Bang Pie Shop, pictured up there behind him. Susan, when you look at that picture and you think of that guy, what, what, do, you, what do you think of first? Well, that's, I love that picture. It's so cute. Um, I'm, I'm so proud of 
what Michael's built up here and and beyond. But you know, I think the importance of of the Bang Bang brand and and presence in our neighborhood and our community. We live in the Logan Square neighborhood in Chicago. Um, has been um, just amazing to watch. Uh, opened now nine years ago, um, but Michael's built it. It's it's his brainchild. He is um, so creative and so passionate about the hospitality space, and I think he brings that love of making others feel loved and welcomed into the business. And you see that um, through him, but you see it through those that work there. I mean, it is very gracious, kind, a welcoming place. And um, we love, I love hearing that feedback from people like, oh, the food was great, but man, people were so nice. Um, and you want to make sure that, you know, that, that, you know, permeates through every, every aspect. And that's all because of my, so I'm super proud of what he's done. Suze, my favorite item on Michael Chapchak's menu outside of his hospitality and love is the strawberry rhubarb pie. <laughs> I could sit and eat pie after pie that that man has brewed up from Bang Bang Pie Shop. What is your favorite item on the menu? Um, John, I'm, I'm typically pretty basic. I, I, <laughs> I love the biscuits. I think Michael nailed it. Um, I, I was pregnant with Will when he was going through so many different recipes all the time we had biscuits like every night for maybe nine months i don't know um but i think the biscuit there's outstanding they do have a a strawberry funfetti pie right now which is like it's like your childhood you're biting into what it was like and the best moment when you were six years old it's just delicious so maybe that um and then keeping it basic with the biscuit <laughs> Hey, Suze, one of the uh, the questions we hear most frequently through our coaching and consulting is how are we possibly supposed to manage leading forward professionally in the virtual world, world where so many of us are right now while remaining married or while trying to navigate life as a single person? And in particular, for those of us who are managing aging parents or little children, you're dealing with all of this with a big job, a full-time business owning husband and five children. So I want to show you one more picture that kind of shows the chaos of your world right now. This is a picture I took on January 2nd, 2021. I needed to get my kids out of their home. We've been trapped in that house for 10 months. So we hopped into the minivan. We drove five hours north and we ended up on your doorstep uninvited. But you open up the door and that chap chap hospitality let us in. You brewed up pies and coffee and goodness and smiles. You see up there nine little kids pictured. <laughs> it's madness. You have five of them. So, uh, Suze, talk about managing five children, marriage, work, COVID, virtual work, everything else that's going on. How are you managing this right now? Uh, John, I, you know, it's it, it's certainly been tough. I think, you know, you you talk about a message of waking up from accidental living and being very intentional and focused and being present. Um, before COVID, that's how my philosophy, my mentality would be that if I'm at the office with my team, I'm, I'm focused on those individuals and the work that we're doing. And I'm not stressing about the bazillion other things. And when I'm home, I'm home. I'm not looking at my cell phone and waiting on those emails. I do try to put it down. The pandemic changed so much because um, work was home, home was work, and there was no division. It, um, very, very challenging at the start of it last year. And I think you kind of work through that and you constantly keep trying to find moments where you can give yourself a bit more grace. Um, I know I, I, I try to do that and I'm still doing that, but it's been tough. But I think a lot of it is recognizing where you are and knowing that it's OK. It's going to it's it's crazy. But, you know, this too shall pass. We're moving through it and you just have to be intentional and 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 you know, um, you can do what you can do. And, you know, you gotta have your priorities and, and Susan is reminding us she's going to, uh, we're losing the connection just a little bit, Suze, with you, but we heard you saying, stay intentional, be focused on the thing that is in front of you. When you are at home, be at home. When you're at work, work. I had an, uh, right. uh, an old poster that used to hang up above my office, the old office, and it said, work like a, work like a dog, but play like a puppy. <laughs> so uh, Suze, as we get ready to, to, wrap up and to move you out of the Live Inspired podcast and into the day in front of you with your work and with your family. There are seven questions that tether all of our amazing guests together, best-selling authors and presidential leaders and overcomers and you know, heroes of mine. 
no one more so than you, Susan. You're an amazing woman, and I'm lucky to be your s sibling. How do you think people these days can continue to have a great relationship with their siblings as they go through life? I I've read a stat that 50% of adult siblings have no relationship. I think in our family, we're blessed to have a good relationship with our siblings. What, what, what is the key to continuing a relationship with your sibling going forward into life? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's that's a very interesting stat um, and somewhat honestly disappointing is that I think one of the greatest gifts that um, mom and dad gave to me, honestly, was was the gift of all of you guys. So um, I, I feel so fortunate to have five um, friends uh, that I love and um, that I, you know, love and respect their spouses, your spouse, Beth, um, and, and children. So I, I feel so fortunate from that. Now, as far as how do you move through it? Again, to me, I, I think it it's being intentional, taking a step away from your busy life. We all have very busy lives and, and finding those moments to, to reach out to your sibling, to see how they are, how their spouse is, or how their job is going or their child and, and just being, more um, present in, in those relationships, you, you have to work at it because oftentimes it can't come naturally. I mean, for example, we, we live virtually all over the place, you know, a little bit of St. Louis, Chicago, Texas. So you, you have to work at it. it you know, it, it can't just necessarily come naturally, if, especially if you, as you're scattered. So that relationship needs to be um, needs to be groomed and needs to be a priority. Um, and I think it's a very special one. Because no one, as you said earlier at the start of the show, no one knows you like your siblings. You, you've got this history and this connection that is 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 just irreplaceable. So that, that was that was such an awesome answer. We we have only about four minutes left on the Live Inspired clock, and so we're going to race through seven questions. We call them the Live Inspired Seven. And Susan, the first one begins with the the question: Susan O'Leary Chapchak, my sister and friend. What is the best or most influential, most impactful book that you have ever read? Wow. I, I mean, I'm not, just saying, this. I'm not just saying this to, to uh, pump up your ratings. Um, On Fire, your first one, I, I found to be a life-changing, incredible book. Um, oh, that's a hard one. Um, let's just stay with that. If you've got six more questions, I, I, I loved your first book so much, um, so much, John. It's, it's incredible. So we had made a deal that if I promoted Bang Bang Pie 11 different times, she would then in re respond, promote on fire. So Susan, this is working just like we planned. Yeah. Question number two, what, what is, in addition to on fire being one of your favorite books, what, what is one positive characteristic or one trait that you possessed as a little girl growing up at 1986 Winmore Place in St. Louis, Missouri, that you wish you exhibited as brilliantly today? I would say, um, we talked about earlier about how I would describe my childhood, carefree, um, that that far more carefree, um, relaxed uh, mentality. I, I wouldn't say I'm as carefree and laid back as I'd like, there's just a lot going on. So taking me back to some of those carefree, um, you know, characteristics and pull that into to today, I think would be pretty amazing. The third question is asked because of Susan. And I know many of our listeners have listened to 350 episodes, but they may not know where question three came from. It came from a little girl who went into a burning house for water. So question number three for Susan O'Leary Chapchek is, Susan, if your house caught fire and your five little babies are out safely and Michael is out safely and you have an opportunity to run back in and grab one item, one physical item that really matters to you, what would you grab? Ooh, my children are out. Everyone is safe. Um, oh, John, these questions, you would think I would have prepared a little bit for these. These are, these are good ones. Um, there's so many different things. Um, we've got one box, which is super handy with all our important documents. Because I'm an organized person and I have five children and a business and I work, I'd probably grab that box of really important documents of birth certificates and passports and everything just so we're prepared because nothing else really matters when the people you love, I guess, are out. So, you know, I'd, I'd probably grab that. Susan's ready to travel. Let it burn. She's at O'Hare taking off for the next destination. Susan, question number four. If you could sit on a bench on a gorgeous day and have a long conversation with anybody living or dead, who, who do you want to be seated next to? Today, right now, I'd love to go sit down and talk to grandma. She's been gone a year. 
she, you know, her mind started failing her a little bit before that. I'd love to sit down and have a nice, nice conversation with grandma, maybe over with a glass of Chardonnay in my hand and hers. <laughs> as long as the Chardonnay was cheap, grandma would join you for it. That's the way she liked to roll. What's the best advice grandma, grandpa, or anybody else ever gave you? I think to just to re remain faith filled to, you know, knowing that things will move past this. Uh, and I think that's probably the spoke of their generation, right? Let's, you know, let's keep moving. So just, you know, to keep the faith and keep going forward. What advice would you give your 20 year old self? So Susan, there are only two questions left. The second to last is what advice would you whisper into your ear? If you could give her some advice at age 20, age 20 is, um, I, I would change almost nothing. I'd say enjoy your 20s. Um, <laughs> have fun, travel, convince your brother to go to Europe with you um, when he tries to bail on you. Uh, you know, get him to join you over there for a little while. But, um, you know, life moves so quickly. And, uh, um, you know, just to uh, just to enjoy enjoy the journey. Susan O'Leary Chapchak, it has been said that all great people can have their lives summed up in one sentence. My sister, how would you like your sentence to read? Um, my sentence would probably read something like, um, it, it, enjoying life for all the gifts that it, it, it possesses and it presents itself and, um, you know, find, finding the good in, in every situation. And that's really how I try to, to move through each day is in, enjoy the day ahead and even with a lot of craziness, um, find that goodness that that is out there. So that would probably be my my mantra. Five children, full time work, busy husband. You guys run your own business, and Susan, you enjoy the day. You are an awesome example to your friends, to your neighbors, to your colleagues, to your coworkers, and most certainly to me and now to our audience here at Live Inspired. I want to thank you for being so remarkable, and I want to thank you for being my sister. John, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Um, reflection that I get to be the first sibling on this podcast. I'm honored and um, won't read between the lines on this, but thank you so much for including me today. Love You're to welcome. You. My friends, that is Susan O'Leary. She's running off now into a work meeting. I beg you to join us on this call today. She is as remarkable as she sounded during that conversation. Listen, this is National Sibling Month. And many of us are in places right now where our relationships with our siblings are just perfect. They're just perfect. And yet what we know to be true, the stats and the science bear this out, that many of us right now have not reached out to a sibling in a long time. It's been a lot longer than maybe it could be. So today, rather than just hearing that beautiful voice from a remarkable human being named Susan O'Leary Chapchak, rather than just thinking about that, mm, those bang bang pies that might be served up in Chicago sometime soon, I'd like you to think about one thing you can do to reach out to a sibling, a family member, or a dear friend that it has just been too long since you've spoken to, since you've shared the words. Thank you for being who you are, and please know that I respect you, I look up to you, and I love you. Maybe today's the day you do that. My friends, I want to thank you for tuning in for a very special edition of the Live Inspired Podcast. I want you to also know that the foundation is firm, the headwind is real, but the best days even still, even still remain in front of us. As we celebrate not only siblings today, but the birthday coming up next week of in awe, in awe. I wanna remind you to stay on fire, live in awe and stay bold and live it inspired. So for this time and until next time, my name is John O'Leary and this is your day. Friends, family, Facebook followers and leaders. Choose to live inspired. And now, a word from our friends at Keeley Companies. Keeley Companies aspires to be a true leader for businesses and communities. In the words of their CEO, my friend, his name is Rusty Keeley, with a world class culture focused on people and customer centric approach, we're truly in the business of people. Check more out about Keeley Companies at Keeley Companies dot com.